Okay, everyone, thanks for joining on today's call. We'll go ahead and get started. Um, I'm Dwayne Brzezik. If you don't know me, I'm the Director of Member Services at NASW Michigan. I'm also a recent admin to Hogwarts School of Witchcraft and Wizardry. Uh, the fun thing about, I guess, having all these digital meetings is there's all these really new features that we can kind of play with to, um, to make them a little bit more entertaining. I, uh, next week, I think you'll have a nice cat collage background for me or something else really fun. Um, if folks have questions about how to do this, I just, I Googled Zoom virtual backdrop and it's really easy to do. So I highly recommend it for your next meeting. Um, but let's go ahead and get started on today's uh, update meeting. So the purpose of this meeting, this is our third of these calls so far. And we just wanna make sure that everybody is as up to date as possible about the most recent news uh, and practice updates around COVID-19 and give an opportunity for you all to share resources if you are finding things in your community or in your practice. We know a lot of social workers are getting very creative, very inventive right now, um, and also is creating some advocacy opportunities for us, which Algeria will talk about as well today. Um, there has been some new news this week on some of the things that we've kind of been waiting for some answers on, and so uh, we'll be happy to give those to you today. Uh, I anticipate our call today will be shorter than the last couple of weeks, just because uh, most of today is gonna be um, some of it's follow-up, but we do have some new stuff as well. Uh, if you'll make sure that your line is muted, if you're not talking, that'll just help reduce the sound for today. But with that, I will turn it over to Algeria. Hi, everybody. For those who don't know me, I'm the Director of Public Policy. It's so nice to actually do these calls because I get a chance to see people's faces. Um, and it's nice to, to see faces versus just emails that come in sometimes. Um, so, on our NASW Michigan website, we created a COVID-19 resources tab. Uh, we have a picture here for you. Um, and there are quite a few drop downs and I just wanna highly, highly suggest that if you have not um, been over to the website and if you have not seen those um, resources, please click on those. We are keeping those up to date every single day. Um, so we have uh, information about Michigan specific resources. Um, our, my legislative updates will be um, put on there in PDF format. Uh, we have, um, I also will be doing policy updates in, in the version of a webinar. So if you're not into reading all the long text, you'll also be able to um, hear a webinar similar to this. We list our trainings. We have our national website that it links to that also has a lot of resources. Um, other training opportunities that are going on right now from some of our other organizations that we work with. And um, information around telehealth resources um, that's constantly being updated and then just updates for social work students. Okay, so I wanna just share with you all um, a few um, executive orders that have happened since we last met or that we didn't necessarily cover in, in depth. Um, executive order 2020-29, as you all may have heard, um, it enhanced early release authorization in the county jails and juvenile um, detention centers, which is a huge win. Um, we're working on trying to get early release for some folks who are in our prisons, and I'll talk about that a little bit more later. Um, and then we have Executive Order 2020-13, which I believe uh, Dwayne will talk a little bit more about here shortly. It just gives flexibility on licensure renewal and CEs for social workers during COVID-19. So just a quick brief overview of that. Um, right now, I know a lot of folks were worried about, you know, if my CEs are, if I'm facing renewal for my license, will I have to, you know, try to get my CE hours in or um, what happens if, you know, um, providers are canceling and things of that sort. We highly, highly still suggest that you continue to take as many online credits as you possibly can. Um, however, <clears throat> If you did not complete your continuing education hours, that will be waived and any work you do towards COVID-19 relief will be accepted. I imagine right now it's effective um, through April 14th, but with the stay at home order extended to April 30th, I'm sure you'll start to see some more updates in some of these other executive orders. Okay, so I can talk just a little bit more about the specific continuing ed uh, executive actions and specifically the rule suspension. So um, we talked a little bit about this last week, but we did get some clarification. So 
So effective immediately, as like Algeria said, till April 14th, but we anticipate that that will be extended possibly at least through the end of April. So that would impact anybody who is up for renewal this cycle. Uh, Laura may renew a license to practice whether or not the licensee has satisfied the continuing education requirement. And Laura may recognize hours work as responding to COVID-19 as hours towards continuing education. So we talked to um, representatives from the Board of Social Work and what they recommend, this is not a free pass for folks. This doesn't mean just stop trying to get your CEs for this cycle if you are a few short. What it means is if at all possible, still get your CEs. Um, and if for some reason you are still not able to because all the courses around you have been canceled, everything that you've signed up for got postponed, um, then make sure you have documentation of that because if you get audited next year, you will likely have to show that proof. Um, they feel that this is, um, you know, it's an extreme circumstance. So for most folks, you might just be a couple of short for the cycle. You know, it's already April. So if you're renewing April 30th, hopefully you only had a couple more to get um, before, before that deadline. Most providers have moved their courses either virtual or into some online format. And so um, I'll talk a little bit in a bit about what kind of alternative formats can, can, can work at this time. But the state definitely recommends that if you can still try to get your continuing education. Um, if you are just a couple of short, they will take that into account if you get audited next year. They know that we're kind of in extreme circumstances right now. So they wanna be as flexible as possible for people, but also recognizing that it's not just a free pass to stop trying to get your continuing education if you don't have it. Okay. Um, okay, so then, okay, this is the one for Algeria. Yeah, so executive order 202030 um, <clears throat> was an executive order that um, expanded um, temporary license for various different public health uh, professions to be able to provide COVID-19 relief. And we wanted to get a little bit more clarification on um, one of the subsections. And so we reached out to a representative um, at LARA and on the Board of Social Work. And I'll just read the executive order um, section. It says, any and all provisions in Article 15 of the Public Health Code are temporarily suspended in whole or part to the extent necessary to allow healthcare professionals licensed and in good standing in any state or territory in the United States to practice in Michigan without criminal, civil, or administrative penalty related to lack of licensure. A licensure that has been suspended or revoked is not considered a license in good standing and a licensee with pending disciplinary action is not considered to have a license in good standing. Any license that is subject to limitation in any other state is subject to the same limitation in the state. So pretty much what that means is if you are, um, if, if someone in Ohio or Indiana or nearby Wisconsin state <clears throat> has a, a license, a social work license in good standing, they're able to come and provide um, work and help with the relief right now during COVID-19 uh, to the state of Michigan. Um, so if you know folks who um, are interested in maybe doing telehealth work in Michigan, try to help out some of the rural states uh, or to provide some relief um, to some of your coworkers, professionals, um, I would highly suggest helping to spread that word so that we can um, do as much as we can here in Michigan. So that's yeah, it. and this is I think this is pretty good news. Uh, I feel like uh, Michigan we haven't had this sort of reciprocity, uh, and so I know the emergency situation has opened up some gates. So it's it's allowing folks to work with our clients right now. We know many um, students have been displaced. Folks obviously are stuck at home, and so their traditional providers might not be available, or there might be social workers who are. In Mich stuck in Michigan who may generally be practicing somewhere else. So this allows those folks to, to continue to work here at this time. Now, as it relates to kind of the vice versa, can Michigan social workers work in different states? Uh, that is state by state still. So if you are wanting to help somewhere else or you have a client who is somewhere else, make sure that you're checking the rules and regulations in that state because they are still changing every day. Some states still don't even have the stay at home order. Uh, it varies greatly everywhere right now. So um, ASWB on their website has been putting the updated regulations as they find them. 
So if you go to ASWB.org, if you are specifically looking for one particular state and whether or not you'd be able to practice, that's going to be your best place right now to find that information. Um, after that, if you still have questions, I would recommend reaching out to the NASW chapter in that state, and they can provide some guidance. Okay, so then uh, our next kind of topic, our standing topic is telehealth and billing. A um, couple updates, one good, one not so good. <laughs> uh, Algeria, do you want to talk about the priority health one? Sure. So um, we heard you all. Um, we heard from some of our um, social workers up north about um, the Upper Peninsula Health Plan and um, at one point they were trying to reduce the uh, rate and reimbursement rate in which they paid social workers um, to that it was originally a physician's fee rate and they were trying to drop that rate and um, right now during COVID-19 we understand just how critical and important it is that our social workers are you know being paid at the proper rate and with all with the help of your advocacy um, the Upper Peninsula Health Plan decided to um, suspend their reversal action around this policy. And so we just wanted to thank you all for your advocacy um, in reaching out to us and reaching out to the Upper Peninsula Health Plan. Um, I will also say that we hear you when it comes to reimbursement rates across the board. Um, I know Max just joined us not too long ago or she's on the line and I don't know if she wants to speak a little bit more about this, but we will be actively working um, to find a solution on how we can help raise reimbursement rates for social workers across the board. Yeah, I can say a little bit. Um, first of all, Dwayne, you mentioned priority health. And um, one of the concerns that we received from Grand Rapids area was that priority health was dropping their reimbursement rate to social workers. Um, and that had already occurred. So Algeria um, will be speaking with Representative Mary Whitford and um, she's been really helpful to us in the past where priority health is concerned. The priority health issue is not just about Medicaid. Um, it's about all of us who, and, and just so you know, I also have a private practice. So these issues are near and dear to my heart. Um, so this priority health affects anyone who's right now on the provider panel for priority health and, and we'll keep you abreast of what's happening with that. Um, additionally, one of the things I asked um, Algeria to look into, I'm curious and maybe someone listening to this um, knows but we know that Medicaid reimburses um, psychiatrists, I think at the rate of $77. And that was the rate when the error was made in 2016 and they began reimbursing social workers um, at the $77 per session. That was at the physician rate. So what I've asked um, Algeria to look into and I'm curious about is, if a physician, if a psychiatrist is meeting with a client, um, what is the minute rate? So those of us who reimburse at a CPT code, reimburse at either 45 or 50 minute um, CPT codes. So is the psychiatrist being paid $77 an hour for 15 minutes or 30 minutes? Um, and um, if we find out that it's 15 minutes or 30 minutes, that will provide us with much more leverage to increase, to push for an increase in Medicaid reimbursement for social workers. In addition to that, um, I'm curious to know, beyond 2016, how long it's been since social workers have actually gotten an increase in the Medicaid reimbursement rate? And um, 2016 doesn't count as a raise in the reimbursement rate since it was retracted in 2019. 
So those are just a couple of things that NASW Michigan is going to be looking into to increase reimbursement for social workers. Um, and again, I'm curious if anybody knows the um, minute slash hour rate that psychiatrists bill at. Yeah, so if you um, are aware of it, you can, you know, type that in the chat box and so we can talk about that once we open it up. Um, I do see some of the comments that are coming in as well, and we'll get to some of those uh, questions and comments here uh, shortly. Thanks, Max, for- I would just add- there. And I, I would just add, if you all are encountering similar sorts of billing issues or changes um, in your practice, please let us know that as soon as you find it. Uh, so we can stay on top of it as well. Um, so it feels like some places are being a little bit shady. So we want to make sure that we are uh, able to serve as clients as best we can at this time and that we're paid appropriately for that. Um, so I, we want to definitely thank our members who, who forwarded this priority help and the UPHP to us. Absolutely. All right. Okay. So I wanted to all let, let you all know of some other actions that we're working on here at NASW. Um, and one, like I mentioned before, is releasing incarcerated individuals from our prisons. Um, we've partnered um, with several organizations such as American Friends for Services Committee, um, Safe and Just Michigan, Detroit Justice Center, and some others. And we sent a letter, a joint letter, um, and recommendations to Governor Whitmer and Director uh, Washington of um, MDOC um, to release as many people as possible uh, during this pandemic. Because we know that prisons, um, the breeding isolations for the spread of COVID-19, um, they're overcrowded um, and uh, the conditions are already inhumane. And we wanna make sure that especially um, individuals who are in our prisons who are, are older or vulnerable or frail, um, are able to get the care that they need outside of the prisons. Um, and so that was what that letter was about. <clears throat> On the next slide, um, there's just a picture of where you can go and find that letter. I haven't had a chance to put it up on our website yet, but I will um, in this coming week. Right now it's on American Friends for Services uh, Committee of Michigan's website, um, AFSC. And if you go to their website, afsc.org, um, you can click the letter and also view the recommendations. Um, on Wednesday of next week, uh, for all of you who uh, have signed up and are registered for the legislative updates, you'll be able to also uh, view that letter via email and the recommendations as well. Um, so I just wanted to, I don't know if anyone is on the line that um, works in our jails and our prisons. Um, you know, we are constantly um, hearing from you all as well about the challenges that you face um, and the conditions that you're working at. And so this letter is um, also an effort to try to help individuals who are, are working there as well. So I just wanted to make sure that we highlighted that, that issue. <clears throat> Other actions that we're focusing on is <clears throat> developing um, a mental health hotline or emotional support hotline um, for individuals throughout the state. So I know you all may have seen um, some communications that Dwayne has sent out and put on our social media about Wayne State University and how they developed a, a hotline, emotional support hotline for frontline workers. Um, and so that's amazing. That's an action that you can sign up for today and begin to volunteer for. This mental health hotline that we're working to develop will be <clears throat> for just Michiganders. Um, and so we've partnered with the Michigan Mental Health Association. Uh, we're working with uh, the Michigan Mental Health Counselors Association, the Autism Alliance of Michigan, and we've been directly engaged with folks over at the Department of Health and Human Services, as well as the governor's office um, to develop this, this hotline. Um, we are still in the works of how we want this to actually look, whether we want it to consist of, um, you know, volunteers and clinicians or just clinicians. Um, but no, we are really working to get something set up. Um, for right now, what we're asking our social workers to do 
um, is to utilize uh, the Michigan Mental Health Counselors Association survey. Um, and so they created a survey for people who may be interested in providing pro bono or volunteer services or services on a sliding scale um, to fill out the survey. So once the hotline is formed, we have a, a list, a, a register, a registrar almost of clinicians who are ready to, to serve. Um, so we have the link here, but we'll be sharing that link on our social media in an email format as well. And so we ask that you um, please fill that out if you are interested in ABLE um, by April 24th. Uh, so the way that we envision the hotline working is almost similar to like a crisis hotline. So people will call in saying, you know, they feel X, Y, and Z, or they're experiencing whatever. Um, then they'll be referred out to um, uh, further uh, temporary services with individuals who have registered um, on this hot, hotline list. So um, that's exciting. And we're really um, excited that we're working to get this together. And we're hoping that we can launch it sooner than later. Can I add something to that? Yeah. Um, I just want to mention that we've also been receiving, you know, similar requests to establish a hotline or assistance in establishing the hotlines from throughout the state. And um, even more recently, I think it was yesterday, I received a call from Andy Meisner. Those of you who are in Oakland County um, know him as the Oakland County Treasurer who has a strong investment in, um, in behavioral health. And he was also interested in getting a hotline started. Um, and so we've put him in touch with Wayne State University, but he has made a commitment to continue to work with NASW. So it's been pretty exciting to see a variety of individuals reaching out to NASW for assistance in establishing the hotline. Thank you. Great, and I did put the link to that survey down in the chat. So if you wanna just even start filling it out or bring it up on your desktop while we're talking, that is, would be an easy way to find that. Oh, Dwayne, sorry. Okay, so kind of swinging, oh, go ahead. Now, before we go forward, um, just kind of going back to telehealth, I did forget to mention one thing. Um, <clears throat> I know we talked about on our last phone call about Medicare and audio only services. And we sent out an action alert for members to take action around that. Um, our national office has received um, information around audio only services and I'll be releasing a statement today. Um, it sounds like Medicare will be allowing for um, almost like a telephone check-in um, for the audio only services, but not for full sessions. Um, and they, they're opening up the comment period between now and June 1st. So National will be releasing a statement about um, what that looks like, what that entails, and how you all can participate in um, the comment period as well. As you can tell, there's lots of moving parts right now. <laughs> and I know that there are lots in your practices as well. Um, so swinging back to continuing education. So again, the Board of Social Work recommends for folks to please try to get your continuing education as normal as possible if you are renewing this April. Um, they wanted to remind folks that any live virtual event still counts as in-person. So uh, the lunch and learns that we do, many of the continuing ed programs have moved to an online format for right now. Those count as in-person, which you can have unlimited in-person, and then you can have up to half of your credits, 22.5 through alternative learning. So that would mean a pre-recorded webinar, uh, can mean like our virtual book club, journals, that sort of stuff. So there are lots of options for folks. Um, right now, but we know since lots of the in-person courses have been postponed or canceled that that is creating a burden for some individuals. So just a reminder, if you joined us late, um, if you don't have your CEs by April uh, and it is due to uh, virus, the virus and courses being canceled, make sure you have documentation of that. Uh, the Board of Social Work and Laura um, may use those as sufficient documents if you get audited. Um, same thing if you are doing COVID response, 
they do not have any specific guidelines of what COVID response actually means. So we're using that as your discretion. Um, if you're on the front lines, if you're doing research, there's, if you're doing community, organi community organizing, just make sure you have documentation of that if you are relying on those for your CEs. Um, but don't try to rely on them if at all possible. We know that many different organizations are offering free trainings right now, including us, and we'll talk about some of those opportunities in a little bit. Okay, some other updates as it relates to licensure. Um, so the first one is for LL MSWs and LL BSWs. So for anybody who had their exam scheduled for the end of March or to mid-April, all Pearson testing sites are currently closed at least until April 16th, but I'm assuming that that's going to be extended at least till the end of April at this point. Um, so Laura is going to be giving a six-month extension for any person who is at the end of their sixth renewal of their limited license. So if they're about to max out of their time, a six-month extension will be given. We recommend that if you are a social worker in that boat or you know a social worker who is in that category, please make sure that they also are communicating with uh, Laura and um, just requesting that. We don't want to assume that it's just going to be blanketed across the board for everybody. So we just want to have folks make sure that you are also reaching out and that gives you a paper trail too. And the earlier, earlier you send that, the better. Um, so again, a six month extension will be given for folks in, in order to be able to take their exam one more time. So that's good news. We were waiting on that for a little while. Um, other clarifications from Laura, fingerprinting. So most fingerprinting organizations are closed currently in the state, not all of them. So in Executive Order 2020-30 from the governor, um, one of the items is that Laura may suspend fingerprinting requirements. Now may is a critical word in here because not all fingerprinting organizations are closed. So they are still recommending to folks that you, uh, you research the fingerprinting organizations in your local area to see if there is an option still to get your fingerprints taken. If there are not, then you can communicate with Laura as long as you show that documentation and they are willing to make some exceptions at this point, but they are preferring that folks still send in, uh, still go to a fingerprinting organization. Um, we know that it's pretty frustrating with a stay-at-home order, but that is their guidance at this particular point in time. Uh, who knows, next week that could change, but as of today, that's, that's their requirement. Um, and I see a comment from Samantha in the bottom. As of March 31st, the fingerprinting site in the Grand Rapids slash Kentwood area was open. Yeah, so we know that there's kind of a mixed bag, and because many of these places have reduced hours right now, that uh, even their times are full, I know I had a social worker reach out to me and like two weeks of time slots were full in their area. So um, just make sure that if that's the case that you document that. I know for students who are graduating in a couple weeks, that's especially um, worrisome to folks. Um, the update that we gave a couple of weeks ago, or maybe it was last week, is you're still, if you're applying for your limited license, your application and fingerprinting should still be sent by paper mail. Uh, Laura's staff is all working remotely, but they do have somebody checking the mail and processing those applications. So there was a little bit of confusion at first about whether those should be emailed or paper mailed, but they should be paper mailed at this point with your payment. Any additional paperwork that needs to be sent, including transcripts, that can be sent through email, but that initial application and fee should be sent uh, direct to the mail. And as Algeria mentioned, can non-Michigan social workers see Michigan clients? Yes, as the new executive order. So that's exciting news. And then, you know, the biggest piece of advice from the Board of Social Work right now is that this is kind of changing times for the whole practice and that we should all just remain patient as possible, help each other out, and document everything. Uh, especially with all these executive orders, a lot of them are va uh, fairly vaguely worded so we don't have 100% clarification about what some of these things mean, like what sort of COVID response can count towards continuing education. And we won't probably ever get clarification on that. So make sure that you're just documenting all of your experience uh, and uh, work that you're doing. 
just a quick update on this. We mentioned this briefly last week, but student loan payments have been temporarily suspended at the federal level. If you have student loans, I know I got an email from Navient this week. Make sure you're checking that or checking your online account. Uh, I know for mine, they were just automatically suspending payments. So uh, for folks who are having that, you can still pay if you would like, and that will still count, but uh, you don't have to at this point for most uh, federal loans. So just make sure you are checking that. NASW has partnered with Savvy. It's kind of like TurboTax for student loans. If you are having issues navigating student loan forgiveness, they are a really excellent resource to navigating all the different options that exist out there for social work um, loan repayment or loan forgiveness, and they can help consolidate uh, that as well. Savvy also has some specific free guidance on COVID as it relates to COVID for student loans, so you can check out that from the NASW national website, socialworkers.org. For any folks who are in field or are field sites on here, you probably already are in the midst of this. Uh, field education from CSWE, they have allowed 85% of field hours to count towards uh, completion. So I know one of our interns is already done for the semester. We're sad to see him go early, but we know that folks, students are really having a, a not so fun end of their graduation for folks. So 85% of hours, um, depending on how long your uh, program is, that might vary a little bit. So we really appreciate the flexibility of organizations, the schools who have um, been putting out information on this, and then to the students who are kind of in the midst of this. Okay, um, ASWB, so this kind of goes back to the exam a little bit. Um, ASWB is waiving registration changes, so they are not accepting uh, they are not allowing folks to register for any exams before May 1st at this point. If you want to schedule a test, you can do so still after May 1st. Um, now, if that time changes or this stay-at-home order gets extended, you'll be able to flex the, that time uh, with no additional cost to do that. Uh, ASWB has their website here, candidate services at ASWB.org. Uh, just make sure you include your authorization number. Uh, and with kind of communication with ASWB, CSWE, and LARA at this point, uh, they're doing their best to reply to a lot of questions. So know there might be a delay in when you hear back from some of these organizations. We're doing our best to get to back to people as quickly as possible, but there's just a lot of unknowns. And as these organizations kind of change their policies around, um, I know they're working their best to do that. Um, okay, a couple webinars and trainings I wanted for folks to know about just because these are some free CE opportunities. We have two free CEs next week, Tuesday and Thursday. Tuesday is our regular lunch and learn about finding a macro social work job. We'll have an excellent panel talking about how to get a career in a macro job. Um, and then on the 16th, this just got put up today because we just finalized it. We're going to have a session on billing essentials with telehealth and assisting management in the time of COVID. So whether you own your own practice um, or are in private practice, this is a good session for you. We have an attorney who's gonna be talking to us. This is also a really good opportunity if you have specific legal questions right now to get some guidance. He is gonna also be talking about things uh, as it relates to the CARE Act, uh, loans that you can get as small businesses, which I know for some social workers, you're looking at that option to continue payroll. Um, he's also gonna talk about some work on if you have to let staff go, how do those conversations go? What are some of the legal ramifications for that at this particular time? Um, so that's gonna be on the 16th. Registration is just open. It's on the NASW Michigan website. Um, our session on reframing anxiety, we had that last week. Last week, yeah, it is available. You can watch it, it's free um, on the NASW Michigan site. Um, we are compiling a whole bunch of resources on our website. I'll show you how to access that in just a second, actually I'll just do that now, because the PESI, PESI is offering free site, uh, free trainings, as well as there's a bunch of organizations offering free sessions. So let me just bring that up really quick. So if you're on the NASW Michigan homepage, as Algeria showed earlier, if you go to the COVID dropdown, um, there's lots of different options here, but you can find the NASW Michigan or NASW webinar trainings, and if you click that, 
you'll see the last last week's um, anxiety webinar. I'll put up the other one around um, billing. I just added that right before we started, so that'll be put up here. National Office is offering a bunch of free ethics training. Um, and then if you go to other training opportunities here, this is where all those other options are. So uh, there's one on black maternal health, uh, communication processes, making funerals more meaningful. There's stuff on early childhood professionals, stuff from nonprofits, lots of really good stuff here. Um, so we're trying to, as we find or get access to different trainings to put that up for folks. If you are hearing of free opportunities in your neighborhood or in your community, please let us know and we'll, we're happy to add those in there. Um, there's also lots of up, other updates in here that we are trying to put in pretty much every day. So make sure just to check back that a couple times a week if you're able to. Um, okay, so just get back to this. All right. These are the national CEs, some mostly around ethics and technology. So if you go to socialworkers.org, you can access any of those. The national office put out a couple of updates this week. They put out a new practice alert on Medicaid considerations to support communities right now. So that was emailed out and it's also on their website. So if you um, would like to get more information on that, um, please do so. And then our CEO, Angela McLean, is doing a kind of a once or twice a week Q&A session about a different important topic that's related to what they are hearing at the national level around COVID. So they've done three so far around um, social workers being recognized as kind of essential workers. Uh, how does the stimulus impact social work and um, teletherapy? So you can read his updates uh, on the national site, as well as they have a podcast that they're doing. We did reach out to, on our social media, to folks who are essential workers. The national office is collecting stories from folks who are essential and on the front lines. They are wanting to hear from folks who have kind of interesting perspectives and to give social workers the cred that they deserve as it relates to what's happening right now. If you are on this call and you are doing kind of front lines work, and we know front lines means a whole lot of different things in terms of what social workers are doing right now, please feel free to email myself or Greg Wright. He's the communications person at the national office. Um, we sent over a bunch of names and stories yesterday. Um, if you do email me, please just include your name, your contact information, and a short story about what you're doing, and we'll send that over to the national office. Uh, the National NASW is continuing to do their ethics consultations uh, Monday through Thursday. So if you have an ethics issue related to what's going on, please feel free to utilize that uh, part of your membership. You can also call the NASW Michigan office and we answer ethics questions or can uh, pass that on to our ethics committee. And then the last thing as it relates to ethics is the national office a week or week and a half ago released uh, eight ethical considerations for social workers as it uh, relates to our practice too. So if you haven't got a chance to just check that out, it's a, it's a good additional resource. Um, we did a brief demo of a lot of these websites last week, but I just wanted to make the point again. So the NASW Michigan website is just nasw-michigan.org. That's all the resources that I kind of showed a minute ago. Socialworkers.org is the national site. And the other demo that we did last week is the My NASW community. If you have not checked that out, I highly, highly recommend it. It's NASW's virtual platform for our members to be able to communicate back and forth across the country. So if you have a question, if you have a really good resource to share, we know there are lots of folks sharing documents related to telehealth on there. If you've developed something yourself that you're willing to kind of share with a broader social work community, please feel free to go to the My NASW community to do that. Um, if you have liability insurance or have questions as it relates to liability insurance and telehealth, um, NASW Assurance Services is a really good resource for that. They put out a few different updates, as well as I know have been fielding questions pretty regularly from members across the country. Um, they also have lots of information about cyber liability, which I, I'm sure has been a huge uptick in terms of the questions they've been getting from, from members right now. 
And then Algeria um, had mentioned some of this earlier, the telehealth provider support line in at Wayne State. So this is just the link to do that. Um, I will make sure that these are, these are also on the website, but uh, a couple additional community websites is Wayne State has also put out, I think it's a three or four page tips and practice guidelines providing telehealth services. Uh, Welcoming Michigan has provided, put a whole um, Google doc together around um, working with refugees and immigrant communities. So if that's your client base and um, the Center for Medicare has put together some videos on coverage and payments of virtual sessions. Okay, so with that, that's kind of all that we officially had today. I know there were some questions. Algeria, Max, do you have anything else to add before we I'll, go into the questions? I'll add one thing. I um, just wanted to lift up a document that Ken Sherman sent over um, and that we're gonna make sure that we get out to folks. Um, just knowing that right now co-pays are being covered uh, for individuals who are going to get COVID-19 testing. However, um, if you, the co-pays are only covered if you um, have tested positive for COVID-19. Um, but that is now active for pretty much uh, every health plan. And so we'll make sure that we get some communication out about that. Um, but I just wanted to thank Ken for sending that over as well. Um, so one of the questions that came through was about supervision, and Charles, I see that you set that over. So let me just open up your line real quick if you just want to give some clarification about your question. Oh, I was uh, asking about uh, supervision since a lot of the, um, as far as face-to-face -face hours for uh, for licensure. You know. Great. Um, okay, so for licensure supervision, if you are an LL. MSW getting your supervision. Um, your hours have never had to be in person. Uh, supervision for licensure has always allowed for virtual or Skype as long as it's live. Um, so just make sure that that's documented that you're doing your supervision. Um, I know I supervise a limited licensed social worker right now and all of our sessions are either Zoom or phone call. Uh, and so just making sure that all of that is documented at this point. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, I see a resource from Shauna. Uh, Star Commonwealth is offering free and reduced rates for their resetting for resilience course. Great, thank you, Shauna. Um, I heard, uh, Misty said, I heard from my student loan lender and interest will continue to accumulate while in forbearance. Um, I would reach out to Sabi um, on that because I'm pretty sure that interest is supposed to be paused during this time as well, uh, but I can also double check on that for our next week's call. Okay, uh, Lisa asks, is any work done with COVID-19 mental health hotline count towards CEUs? So again, our answer would be yes. Just make sure you're documenting that. If you are helping out, say, with the Wayne State hotline in some capacity, or once we get uh, the state line, statewide hotline up and running, um, we assume that that will count. Now, say we get a mental health hotline up and running and extends past April 30th, which is the current stay at home order. We don't know if continuing education will count towards anybody's next cycle starting if your new cycle starts May 1st. But just make sure everything is documented because everything in these executive orders are time sensitive, right? So we want to make sure that if you are utilizing that for this particular uh, cycle, or maybe you're renewing next year, so you're in your middle of your cycle, that you just have documentation of that for right now. All right. Any other questions from folks? I have a comment. <clears throat> yeah. Um, I just want to take this opportunity um, to thank Dwayne and Algeria for their hard work on these weekly sessions. And um, in addition to that, 
to let all of you know that we really need memberships now um, to continue with this. Right now we're all working from home and um, we've noticed a drop in memberships and um, we've been trying really hard to meet the needs of members. So if you know of someone who's not a member, this is a perfect time to let them know about these Friday, um, these Friday meetings and to encourage them to please join so that we can help um, with everything from COVID-19 to the billing issues, um, to the policy updates, to changes in policy. But we really, really need um, you to advocate for us, for members. Also know that um, NASW now is open to associate members. So you don't have to be a social worker to join NASW. Um, and as long as you're doing work similar, someone's doing work similar, um, whether it's policy work, governmental work, um, volunteer work that has a strong component of helping others, um, focusing on the whole person, um, we, they can join as well. So please be our advocates too, we'd appreciate it. Thank you, and again, my thanks to Duane and Algeria for providing this. Thank you, Max. Um, I did want to also mention for folks that um, on kind of an unrelated topic, we will be sending out our uh, election slate later today. So please make sure to take a look at that. Um, the NSW Michigan Board of Directors and our CCNLI, which is our chapter leader uh, committee on nominations and leadership, which basically helps identify candidates to fill in leadership positions at the state level. Um, we'll be opening that election a week from Monday. So we just want to get folks more uh, familiar with the folks who are running for that. And just to remind folks to please vote in those elections when it happens a week from now. The national office is having their elections for their board of directors right now. They sent out an email earlier this week. So please make sure to um, just take a quick click on that link. It will take maybe five minutes at the most to vote in that. Uh, we just want to make sure Michigan social workers have a voice at the national level and the state level. And it's really important that we have good folks in, in those seats, just like we want good folks at the, the next national and state elections that we'll have just months from now. <laughs> we for, kind of forgot that there's an election going on too, with the rest of the world being in a, in a different mode. Um, but we, we want to, I, I want to just say thank you all for being here. It's nice to see some faces on these calls every week. We know that this has been a really tricky time for folks um, and you all are putting sometimes your own mental health on the back burner to help clients out. And so um, if there is anything that you all need right now that can make your practice easier or better, please let us know. We wanna make sure um, uh, that we, we are there for you. Um, really quick question from Nancy. Uh, getting certificates from trainings emailed. So all of our webinars that we host, um, certificates are typically emailed about a month afterwards, uh, especially our lunch and learns. They're always emailed out like usually a day or two prior to when that next one is gonna be. So um, for the one that was held a couple weeks ago, that'll probably still be a week or two before we get those sent out. All Can right, I, any other questions? Like, I would just like to say before we go, um, if you have not, signed up for my legislative emails, um, please do so. You have to check them, check a box to say that you want to receive legislative um, and social policy emails. Otherwise, consider spamming folks. Um, and we don't want to do that. Um, so please, please um, make sure that you subscribe to those so you can stay up to date with everything that's going on um, locally and nationally. Um, I typically send them out once a month, but because of COVID-19, I've been trying to send out at least one a week. Um, so there will be one coming out next week. And um, if you sign up on the website that Dwayne has up now, um, you'll be able to receive that. Additionally, um, if you're interested, we do our legislative and social policy meetings 
on the third Friday of every month. So our next meeting is on the 17th. And um, that'll be from 12 o'clock to 1.30. It'll be virtual as well. And we'll make sure that we put that information up on our website as well. That's all I have. Thanks, Danielle. Right. Danielle says the legislative updates are great. <laughs> well, we hope everyone has a nice relaxing weekend and we'll uh, hopefully see you on next week's call. So thanks everybody. Thanks everybody.